So what actually happens after you flush the toilet? The water that goes down your drain is collected together in a sanitary sewer. This mixture of solids and liquids is called sewage. Before releasing this water back into the environment, we need to remove the chemicals and contaminants that were added to the water when it was used. These are things like soaps and detergents, food waste from garbage disposals, and yes, urine and poop. Interestingly, the main part of sewage that needs to be removed isn't harmful chemicals or disease-causing bacteria. It's all the stuff that makes really good food for microorganisms. So why is this a problem? Just like us, to get energy from what they eat, these microorganisms need to breathe oxygen. This means that the more food you give them, the more oxygen gets consumed from the water. This consumption of oxygen is called biochemical oxygen demand, or BOD for short. If it's too high, aquatic animals like fish can suffocate and die. The BOD is removed from sewage at wastewater treatment plants. Remember how sewage is made up of solid and liquid parts? The first step is to separate these. To do this, the sewage is collected in a large tank. This allows most of the solid components to sink to the bottom, while the liquid flows out the top. Just this step alone removes one-third of the BOD. Next, the liquid is collected into a large basin. By pumping in air, a perfect environment is created for those microorganisms that like to consume the sewage. That's right, the same guys that were causing us problems and killing fish before are helping us to remove the BOD now. These microbes grow and multiply. By letting the microbes sink, we can separate them from the liquid and remove the BOD from the water. This, in combination with the initial settling, can remove more than 85% of the BOD. After this, the water is filtered and disinfected to make it safe for release back into the environment. And that's what happens when you flush.